want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Hello YouTube, Steve O Trucker here. <laughs> Another energetic start yet again. Sorry for lack of content recently. I do apologise. Just been really busy of late, with work, with home life, and pretty much everything. So, what are we going to be talking about today? No, actually, I'll tell you once we. Uh, and how long it takes us to get out from here but first of all i want to say a massive and seriously a massive thank you to all my subscribers and yeah i've uh, bumped up a few already i know yes only a few but at the same time it's a lot for me and you're all very much appreciated and that reminds me, if you do like what you see in this channel, please hit, smash that subscribe button. Also hit that like button as well, it helps out the videos and the channel at the end of the day. So, yet again, we are going to be talking about today is health and safety and sight walls. Hypocrisy, I think is the word. Or, you know mad health and safety rules and such like that you witness in the industry but first of all i'm going to state i'm all for health and safety you know i'm all for sight rules i respect them you know i'm not here to criticize health and safety in the form at all it's just where in some areas and it's going to come out what i'm going to be saying and you'll go oh actually yes he does have a point or well, hopefully i have a point <laughs> But it's where basically where you get a situation of that you have one lot to the other lot who well basically one wall for one lot and another wall for the other lot. It's probably the biggest thing that winds me up on the health and safety and slash sight walls thing is so it's a bit like for example you got to wear a helmet on the site. You know, so you're you're wearing your helmet and then you see their staff in the exact same areas not wearing helmets. Even when you challenge them, you go, yeah, so, but, you know, you went into that, and vice versa. You know, you've gone in, you, you were told you need to wear a helmet, you're not being briefed. Yeah, you look, you normal little look where you see people aren't wearing the helmet, so, you know, you crack on. And suddenly, somebody pulls you for it, going, oi, where's your helmet? <laughs> and this actually happened to me uh, the other day. Been on this site loads of times. Never had to wear a helmet in this area before. And fair enough, it, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I think it must be one of the health and safety managers on this big massive factory we go to. Came up, bear in mind he wasn't wearing any safety glasses nor helmet. And he was like, where's your safety glasses and helmet? You must wear it in this area. I did challenge him back, but I was sort of thinking, hang on, you're not wearing your helmet, you're not wearing any glasses, and yet you're coming up into the exact same area. And as I said, fair enough, okay, sorry, I didn't know, you know, so I highlighted him, I wasn't briefed. You know, and also the other funny thing I saw, which I did bring up with this company, is in the background, you had a load of, like, curtsiders. I'm not going to say what company they're from. And uh, obviously the curtains all left open because they're, you know, all been dropped to be offloaded and loaded. And, uh, basically, it's a windy day and the curtains were loose. I mean, they're all un fully undone and just sort of randomly pulled over one end to the other or just sort of all loose but you know closed if you know what I mean I was sort of thinking why don't they strap them up either end you know just so to stop them from blowing around and potentially because people do walk beside these trailers 
and whacking them because the curtains were getting gripped by the wind and you know I was a bit surprised actually. So I'll, I'll quickly mention it to well the you know managers we do work for there and so look you know what about but at the end of the day they, they weren't didn't seem too bothered about it. You know, I, I just politely m mentioned it. So at the end of the day it's down to them to you know sort it out. You know, we have nothing to do with that end of the business at all. But it does amuse me though, because I said to me, you don't need any specific training to do it per se. You know, you can always get a driver to show you different ways of securing the curtains if needed. But yeah, it, it, it's mental, as I said, it's a bit like that manager who pulled me for the helmet, which fair enough, I stick my hand up all day, yeah. Fair enough, there was a wall there that needed to wear a helmet, but I have never been briefed nor been told, even though I've been loading in that point for, for a long, long time, I mean almost since I've been doing this job. You know, I've been in there many a time. Didn't do nothing different that day, you know, to what I normally do. So obviously, focus on what's going on like out on the road. You just had a car race up to the junction, which I had to stop for, but we had a little bit of momentum up. So uh, let's uh, kill it off. That is alright, no dramas. Yeah, but it, it is mental, you know, you just think about it, you know, like... And you go on site and, you know, you see in the background the staff not complying with the health and safety you've been told to do in the exact same areas, and you're like... You know, it's definitely one wall for one and another wall for another lot. And, you know, as, as I was sort of hinting to earlier, it's also depend who's on shift that day, what manager's there, what health and safety guy's there, you know, what their view is on stuff. You know, what context do they take, you know. And, but at the funny end of the market also is the fact that when we, as drivers we have a legitimate concern about something, because we've seen it and we know what the end result could be, you know, what the risk is. And when we highlight a danger, not saying in all cases, but out of my experience, it's very dependent if you listen to or not, and that more likely you're just going to be completely just mugged off, to put it politely. Because at the end of the day, as drivers, we are, you know, between a rock and a hard place at the end of the day. And, you know, and that's one reason I say generally this is something that will never really get sorted out. You know, and you know, the hypocrisy happens for multiple reasons. Sometimes some people don't realise they're being hypocritical, that they're not wearing the crap PPE either, or others on the workforce aren't, you know, for example. And sometimes it is targeted because we are a third party, you know. They, they feel like oh, we can give them some grief, not grief, but you know, we'll have a go at them because we're not going to get any comeback at the end of the day. At worst, the driver will, you know, oh, why aren't you doing it? <laughs> and they perfectly know that nothing really would come of it at the end of the day in the big picture of things. And uh, as I'm about to say, you know, this video is not going to change a thing, but I think it's a subject that needs to be talked about a little bit more, you know, and brought to light. I mean, even some of uh, other vloggers have semi-showed it on the videos on occasion, either accidentally, but, you know, but I suppose you only spot it because uh, if you're a trucker, you kind of know what you're looking at after time. And I'm sure, you know, fellow truckers who may see this will probably go, yeah, fair enough, I've seen stuff like that happen. I know we're not the only workforce that can get afflicted by this, or this issue. 
I said there was many reasons why it can happen. I said they could be deliberately targeting in some ways. It's a form of bullying in a way. You know, you know some, I've been to the old company and you can tell that they get a bit of a kick of getting a grip of, uh, you know, any other drivers except from their own or their own staff. You know, they're, they're more than happy to, you know, get a grip, even if it's kind of contradictory to what actually is going on in that area so e.g. their workforce isn't wearing going back to hard hats a simple example they're not wearing hard hats you know but you're all being made to wear a hard hat even though they're operating with you in the same area you know go figure uh, 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 uh. I say, when you're stuck behind the cyclist, sometimes the best thing is just to be calm. Just go with the flow. Don't do anything reckless. Because by the time we get speed, we have no time to get through these gaps. Not sensibly, anyway. Maybe after this orange car. So, you know, she may want to faff about with some gears first, which will delay your overtake. There we go. So, I take it easy today. There's a little bit of a wind today. Oh, yeah, so at the end of the day, you know, it, it is what it is. And Probably my bits of advice if you ever come across this sort of situation, especially as a new driver, most of the time just grin and bear it and have a laugh af after. I know it's frustrating, and yes, I I've been guilty where I've got a bit angry about it. You know, and I do stick my hand up because it is irritating when it happens. When it is going on big style, it, you know, but you know, you may appreciate that, you know, we are the what can our place? What do we do? If we tell our company, our company is going to want to cheese off the customer, are they? You know, you know. So I do feel for the company. So you know, even if you report it for, to your company, there's no guarantee anyway that anything will be dealt with it anyway. Because there's many reasons why they might not get around to doing it, except for this if there has been an accident or you know uh, a severe near miss. Then fair enough they will most likely probably have a look at it because everything these days is all about liability at the end of the day but yeah but same time you know you got to stick with a lot of times you have to win and bear it you know even though some rules you come across and some health and safety rulings will completely baffle you you know, you wonder what. Yeah, so there is some rules out there. I wonder why we do. Or there's a lot easier ways of going about it than what they have implemented, and probably even cheaper than what they're doing, but still just as safe. One of the most uh, common ones I've seen, certainly not when I was doing RDC work, is at some RDCs they would, for trucks that are being offloaded on bays, they would get them to fully detach. And then put a uh, airlock onto the airline. When I'm like, why well, you just put the airlock on the airline? I know you, I can semi see why, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of stages that you're almost in inviting or inviting mistakes slash, you know, danger into it. You know, because more movements of trucks means more risk. If a driver's in a rush, hang to detach and get tipped, you know, only takes one to forget, <laughs> as they would say. But I saw see, and at the end of the day, it is what it is, and you just grin and bear it at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the, the, we, the walls are put in for reasons, you know, you may not have to agree with all the reasons, but they are there because they're there, if that ever makes any sense. 
and even the rules that you will probably no doubt come across and you wonder why you know you have to do that it's a bit like you know when you're on a site wearing a hard hat when whatever could ever drop on your head would wipe you out anyway even with your hard hat on but that falls down to liability it's a bit of a nightmare round about this one because I say you got Tesco's just off to the left which everybody probably wants to go to You're turning in. Let's go. So I would also like to hear from yourselves if you've come across, you know, hypocrisy and or what was it? Try not to name the companies if possible. You know, just go through generally what happened and you know. But I would love to hear. You know, I know I'm not the only one who's run into it, and I won't be the first. I won't be the last. You know, it is what it is, and you always have, you know, keen people at any company going around, you know, irrespective of what they're trying to act well. I see what they're wanting to achieve, but they sometimes go about it in a wrong way. <laughs> It is what it is at the end of the day, but I do, as I've already stated, I do feel it is more those subjects, and it's just, you know, a few of the subjects I do chat about, but I do feel it needs to be touched upon a bit more within the vlogging community, and to maybe a bit more discussion to go on. I mean, I'm not expecting a cure to it or a fix for this, no way. I'm not saying no way, but very unlikely is probably more the word. just because there's so many cogs that you would have to look at and assess and even then it's all down to error but it doesn't harm to talk about it because it brings a bit more awareness up to it so maybe companies may start then listening to to drivers or being a bit more politer with how they approach drivers because most of the time while I've been gripped it's been in almost a very rude way it's like, oi, you! you! how dare you not wear a helmet! <laughs> and so sometimes it's done very politely you go, excuse me driver um, are you aware you know, that you're meant to be doing this here you know because also it's a good lesson learning process doing it the polite way because then they can work out where has it gone wrong is it from the driver's end you know because most of the time the driver go oh sorry i wasn't aware of that i've never been told you know that i had to do that and you might even get off the driver i've been here loads of times never had to wear a helmet here or you know do this here then that tells whoever's being a grip going actually if i'm taking this seriously there is a failing here that obviously the drivers aren't getting briefed or the message isn't being passed to the drivers or to the people in the work area what they actually need to be doing or there's obviously a lot of cross cross wires as they would say you know it's a good problem solving and it and it doesn't really cost any money to do it's a good way of assessing and going actually we need to we could improve our process here or oh, actually no our process is working he just forgot or you know he just had to slip of the brain as they would say you know it's all done easy done i've gone on sites where i know i should put my helmet on and you know we're in a rush have everything else on or you know you forget to take something with you and it happened to be your glasses or your helmet or whatever it may have been you know and I've done it, I've got half down the trailer and oh, I need to put my hard hat on, for example. <laughs> Go back up to the truck, put my hard hat on. You know, or whatever it may be. Look, now you're in the gate. So, it winds me up when you get people who drive on the roundabout as if they're going to go straight over the roundabout, then stick the indicator on. Even though, because there's, well, there's no reason for not to indicate on that roundabout, it wasn't like it was going straight over. Or, well, if he's going left, he should indicate going left. He doesn't have to put indicator if you're going straight over. But if you're going right on the roundabout, stick your indicator on. Especially on the simple roundabout like that. Ah! 
<laughs> Sorry, it just winds me up that, you know, I could have gone, well, well, I suppose I could have gone, legally speaking, but luckily it's on lastmate.com. I don't think he apologised. It is what it is at the end of the day. All part of being out in the roads. And that's why being observant is important, because you never know what you may come across. Especially on the wing road like this, we're in Digcot. It's more the last weekends before Christmas. Well, not much, I say. So there's a lot of people about. Which means there'll be a lot more Muppets out on the road as well. I'm not saying everybody is, I'm just saying mathematically, obviously, more people out on the road, there's bound to be some absolute yee-haw going on. <laughs> I'm too important for an indicator, it's a little bit late. <laughs> yeah, but never mind, it's not, this video isn't about that, it's just amusing when you see it in cotton camera, but yeah. At the end of the day, it's what happens out in the road, and as I said, we're an accident avoider. So we avoided getting ourselves involved. Good, all good. So yeah, so at the end of the day, I would love to hear back off yourselves. So feel free to comment down below if you've witnessed it. It doesn't have to be in trucking, it could be in any form of workspace, you know. Maybe you go between factories or something, or... As the, the biggest offenders I find tend to be the big places, big companies, you know, in terms of... Not necessarily big brands necessarily, but big sites where you got lot lots and lots of management lurking about and there's many chiefs but generally not much communication <laughs> but I said there's many reasons why it goes on it can happen it's just, as I say, it's frustrating when you go on the site and you're complying with the walls, or you've been told to comply with the walls. As you should do as a driver, you should comply with the walls. You know, you shouldn't... You know... Go out of your way. I don't know I should get that my, that's my bed. You know, we can only go that way anyway. Never mind. But either way, you know, at the end of the day, it is frustrating at the same time as much as it is hilarious when you look back at it. You know, you look upon it and you go, really? <laughs> so what's going on here? It's probably the light's been red, probably. So yeah, so at the end of the day, it is what it is, as I always say, but it is something, as I've already stated, that needs to put a bit of a chat about, you know. I don't know if I may put a poll on this video. Obviously, you either see it during the video somewhere or through the video. If I have managed to put a poll on it, I might, and this will be for you more if you don't want to comment, but you know, if you want to say, yes, I have come across this, I might have a question, some of you come across, you know, mad health and safety, or, and, hypocrisy on, on sites. I said, what I mean by hypocrisy, hypocrisy, again, is, It's basically when one, there's one wall for one and another wall for another. And, you know, and some people do it and some people don't. But yet you're, as I said, you're forced to do it when others aren't. You know, or it could be vice versa. You know, it, it, is, it is kind of an issue in the industry. It's not rampant, but it is there. It is, you do come across it. I say, well, we do, well, I say, we do have one of our main customers to go to. It kind of like that. And that's one of the reasons what's kicked me to do this video. Rammed it home. 
because certainly as new drivers if you come across it it depend on the mentality of it it, it it can wind you up and it's just to be prepared mentally that you could have come across this and you may have to you know at the end of the day I, my biggest advice is bite your tongue over it as best you can within reason you know comply with health and safety rules and sight rules at the end of the day you know there's no excuse to not comply If there has been a failing, don't be shy to mention it, but remain polite how you do it. And only do it if you can do it at the end of the day. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, as long as you've done the right thing, that's all what matters. Don't worry about other people. You do the right thing. So I'll leave that there before I went on even further about it. I want to say a massive thank you to all my subs again, you know, seriously. You know, you're all very much appreciated, and as I said, I've had a little bit of a oomph up in numbers recently. And it would help out if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. Check out my Instagram and Facebook. I do try to put stuff on there weekly, I'm not always the best at it. But I do put stuff up on there, so if you want to see photos primarily of I'm um, out and about doing stuff, you know, go and check that out. Some nice stuff. So yet again, I would like to say a massive thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Over and out. Stay